Hey everyone, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very, very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, welcome back guys. So y'all, we made it. Welcome to 2020. Um, this is exciting. Uh, I just really feel like this is going to be a really exciting year for all of us. Uh, not just an exciting year, but a really a, an exciting decade to come. So congratulations to all of us that made it through the hell that has been the last, I want to say two and a half years. I know for many of us, there was a massive activation that happened in the summer of 2017. I know that's when my activation really happened, <laughs> like big time. And then, you know, 2018, 2019, 2019 especially though, were periods of purging and healing and letting go of things that no longer serve us so that we can create space for that which we truly desire and what we really want in our lives. So welcome to that decade where it seems that this stuff is gonna be coming through. Yeah, I'm really, really excited. And also, I'm very excited for you guys to see the readings for this month, um, for January of 2020. Uh, as I was doing them, you know, they were all ugh, all coming out really great. Even though there were some, you know, challenging parts for certain signs or certain situations, ultimately, though, it's all a good thing. And it's all, um, Spirit is saying, even now, it's a process of healing and... Um, uh, process of healing that is taking place in order for us to really break free from the chains and do what it is we truly desire in our lives yeah so just a few things um i want to mention first if you are interested in getting a personal reading please don't hesitate to email me all of the information is in the description box below um just keep in mind that if you are looking for a private a personal reading your best bet is to just email me first as that's where I'm most likely going to direct you. You can hit me up on Instagram. That one is a pretty good option. I'm, However, I'm going to be asking you for your email address anyway, so you may as well just want to email me if you want to do that. Do not send any inquiries through Facebook. I will not be taking uh, private reading inquiries through Facebook. Yes, that is just not as a reliable source for communication at least in my opinion, as I've experienced moving forward, yeah? Email is always the best, but also Instagram is a good way too. You can find all of that information, the link to my Facebook page, the link to my my Instagram page, and my email address, along with all of the readings that I offer, their descriptions and prices in the description box below, yeah? Um, so for the readings this month, Oracle Guidance is coming again from the Earth Warriors Oracle. I really, really love this deck. This was a gift from one of our subscribers here. Thank you so much, Sam. I really love this deck. Um, and then the readings themselves are structured a little bit differently. First of all, I highly recommend that everybody watches the Capricorn reading as we are in Capricorn season right now, or at least as for the month of January. Um, a very happy birthday to all the Capricorns out there, by the way, and also a very happy birthday to the January Aquarians. Yeah. But um, I do recommend that people do watch the Capricorn reading because even if you don't have Capricorn in your chart, uh, it can give you a good amount of insight as to um, you know what you could expect during Capricorn season. Moving Moving forward, I do think I want to do that more often. I may actually just start doing a reading, a separate reading for the season that we're moving into because I kind of feel like, uh, you know, I don't want you guys' readings to get hijacked when it's supposed to be like, say, for Capricorn, but it turns into a big old collective reading. So that's the way it worked this time. Moving forward, I think I am going to do a separate reading because I think it would be good just to have a general reading just to see what's going on for the collective um, in terms of the different seasons that we're moving into. Also, for the readings, I have now included Jupiter in the situation. And it's funny because for the last like six months of 2019, I was kind of hearing myself say and want to say Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. I just never actually did it. Um, but starting this year, it is a thing. Um, Jupiter is a great way, like say if you're looking in terms of love, if you're looking for like a husband or your like a masculine counterpart, you would look to your Jupiter sign. And conversely, if you were looking for like a wife or a feminine counterpart, you would look to your Venus sign. But also Jupiter is a planet of luck um, and, and finance and fortune and whatnot. And so if you kind of want to see like maybe how your career is going or whatnot, whatever, you might want to look at Jupiter. Yeah. So I just threw that in there. Um, in case you guys were interested, yes. Also, moving on into 2020, my channel is now 
up and eligible for memberships and with memberships come different tiers of perks and whatnot and so over the year of 2020 i am going to be rolling that out i have some planning to do with it i wish i could roll it out you know january 1st it's ready to go but that's really not realistic because i didn't get the email the notification about it until like mid-December when I was actually, I was in the middle of recording the last Twin Flame reading that I did for December, which is a great one. If you haven't seen it yet, absolutely go ahead and watch that. But I got the email during that reading. And so I'm now, I got to take some time to plan and see what I want to do, what kind of perks I want to offer um, and all that kind of stuff. But that is coming. I'm super, super excited about that. Um, I'm going to be going through a whole rebranding process during the month of, or during the year of 2020. So I'm super, super excited to bring you guys more content. And I would, if you're interested in becoming a member, I would highly recommend that you do that because then that's going to provide me with more financial stability in order to devote more time to the channel and to the readings and to you guys. And there are more things that I want to offer, like tarot uh, services, like count, um, uh, counseling services. If you're interested in learning the tarot, um, that might actually be a membership perk that I'll offer, like a you know for members only weekly like tarot masterclass or some something like that. You know what I mean? I mean it's just an idea, but um, if you are interested in membership, I would highly recommend that you consider doing so once it's available, because again, that will allow me more time um, and, to be able to devote. To the channel yes okay guys so i guess that's it i'm gonna stop rambling and let's just get into the reading yeah cool hey there virgo welcome to your reading for january 2020 thank you so much for tuning in all right virgo let's get into this for you um i do want to start by saying that you know overall the messages for all the signs up until this point, I started with Capricorn because it's Capricorn season. I'm ending with Sagittarius. I'm doing Virgo right now. All of the readings that I've, I've done so far, while many of them may have been challenging, they have all have had some sort of positive outcome, even if you're dealing with a massive upheaval in your life, right? I just did the readings for Cancer and Leo, and let me tell you, those readings were fantastic. And then I shifted into your energy, and I was like, uh oh, 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 something doesn't feel right. <laughs> and I was like, oh God, please don't tell me that's true. Like, please tell me that's not true, blah, blah, blah. But there is an element of challenge for your energy right now, Virgo, moving into the, um, into the, Jan the month of January for 2020, but also I really kind of feel like this is for 2020 moving forward. But this challenge is good. Um, it's setting yourself, you're setting yourself up for some sort of victory. Let me stop with the conjecture and let me talk to you about what you actually have here. In your pre-shuffle energies, you have the Knight of Cups with the Nine of Swords and Justice. There is a sense of wanting to reach out, wanting to make amends, maybe even wanting to express your love for someone, but there's a shit ton of anxiety surrounding it because there's almost this energy of um, a reckoning coming through <laughs> with justice. Now, this could be an energy of, you know, someone needing to set the record straight, someone feeling like there may be some sort of karmic backlash that they have to deal with or they may have dealt with already. Um, there's also a sense of pride and ego here because I feel like that for somebody who has recently, maybe recently come into this either realization of what their true feelings are or being able to accept the fact that they have these true feelings, these certain feelings, and now they're getting into an energy of wanting to express them. There's a little bit of an ego battle that's going on within you, five of wands and the hermit that's saying to you, you've known this all along and yet you've denied it. And so now there's this energy of with justice here, kind of having to like swallow your pride or swallow your ego and just kind of go with the flow and actually come forward and admit yes this is true um this is what i wanted the whole time or this is you know this is the this is the truth about me that i just i was trying to hide okay <clears throat> but but virgo even though i say that that doesn't mean that's a bad thing and even though that might be really challenging for you to handle to accept to admit to and we all know how virgos hate being wrong i mean i i get it too i have a virgo rising so i'm not <laughs> i am not completely exempt here but and we do know yes virgo tends to be right but they're but they're not always right 
right? So there is a little bit of en an energy that I'm getting with this with this justice, especially with the Nine of Swords here, of kind of having to swallow your pride and say, okay, let by I'm hearing let bygones be bygones, let the past be the past, and, and, and be humble enough to do what it is you need to do to express yourself in whatever true feeling way you are needing to in order to bring balance and justice and harmony to your situation. You have the Hermit with the Five of Wands and the Knight of Swords, I'm sorry, the, the Page of Swords. And I'm with this, I'm hearing the truth shall set you free, okay? And either you're in an energy where you're really, I mean, this is you, first of all, Virgo, this is you. This card represents Virgo energy. But, um, so, so excellent, you're showing up for your own reading, especially you're showing up front and center right away. I really like that, I really appreciate that, Virgo. That's beautiful, because already that's giving me an energy of you being willing to admit where you may have been wrong beautiful but please understand at least from my point of view i don't really think there is such a thing i don't see there is such a thing as in spiritual truth i really don't see there's such a thing as right or wrong there is only experience and perspective and even perception okay there really is no such thing as a right or wrong here okay so so if if you want if it would be helpful to you let's take that out of the equation altogether Let's just take the whole energy of being right or being wrong out of the out of the situation. Unless you dealing with that trigger is going to benefit you. Like don't take it out of the equation just so that you can escape a certain reality. Yes, Virgo? Okay, great. But with this energy of the hermit with the five of wands and the page of swords, I feel like you've been you've learned a lot either up until this period now or as we're moving into this next cycle, moving into January 2020, and maybe even especially throughout 2020 there is something that you're learning about that is that you, and i really do feel like there's some sort of external influence whether that be in a specific person that you may be or may have been watching or just learning from your environment observing what's going on around you and and seeing how that reflects your internal reality there is an energy of either something you have been learned over have been learning over this period of time or something that you're going to be learning moving forward that's going to allow you to settle the unrest within you the the differing of opinion within you with that five of wands energy is going to allow you to come to a deeper awareness of who you are intrinsically who you are as a person deep down underneath deep down in the deepest cores the deepest recesses of your of your of your um of your being right <clears throat> overall energy is the queen of pentacles and the first thing the absolute first thing that i hear with this queen of pentacles energy is this person if this is not you if this is something someone external to you maybe if it's a divine counterpart twin flame or, or just someone you consider to be a soulmate or a significant other whatnot whatever this person loves you loves you absolutely 100 percent loves you this could be another earth sign i mean this could be you Virgo, this could actually be a a, 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 um, a Capricorn because the Queen of Pentacles does represent Capricorn, but it also could represent a Tauren, all right? It doesn't matter. And even if it's not an Earth sign, it really doesn't fucking matter. It's just a matter of this person that is external to you, this, really per this person really fucking loves you and really wants to be a provider, um, really is probably the, the wife archetype, whether it's a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. It's just someone that's in the feminine side of the situation and would resonate more with the, 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 the feminine or wife archetype of the situation. And you maybe potentially, if that's the case and this is your counterpart, then you would be the masculine to this, right? But there's, but there's a, and also whether this is an external person or not, there's also an energy of nurturance, unconditional love, um, but also structure and and a bit of discipline and maybe even tough love. I really feel like there is an influence, whether it's uh, like say your divine counterpart or just another person in your life, whether that be a mother figure or not. Um, there is an influence here. Uh, on the from the feminine energy that is allowing you the nurturance and the care and the love that you need to go through this sort of transformation that we're kind of talking about here. Also, though, one of the first things that I did pick up on in this energy was a mother specifically. There could be a woman in your life, whether this is actually your mother or um, uh, a mother figure, uh, an aunt or or cousin even maybe uh, of like a really nurturing type if it is a cousin it's someone that's very nurturing towards you maybe someone that was an older cousin that really did a lot to help 
take care of you as you were growing up. That's kind of an energy I'm feeling from it. Um, it could also be a grandmother, uh, a godmother, a great aunt, or maybe just a feminine figure, whether it's a man or a woman, or a woman that has been in your life that has really been a strong influence on you, maybe even a strong parental influence on you. There could be some sort of ego battle between you and this person. And with this Page of Swords energy here, there could be an energy maybe in the month of January or maybe even coming in the near future at some point throughout the year where you really could be asserting yourself towards this person and saying, look, I know you've had some sort of misconception. I know you've had this view of me that I kind of molded to as I grew up and as you as you nurtured me and cared for me, but I'm, I'm here to set the record straight. That's not who I really am. And if you can't accept that, then we might have a problem. <laughs> you may not necessarily be saying it in those exact words. You may be really, you might actually, it might behoove you to really be as tactful as possible with this individual just because, you know, you do respect this individual very much for who they may have been to you in their, throughout your life up until this point. But let's look, you are a grown man. You are a grown woman. You are your own individual. And this is the energy that you're coming to terms with, with this five of wands hermit energy, right? So this really could be an expression of internal conflict, but then also, especially turn in terms of this queen of pentacles energy, whomever this may be for you, this could be an energy of you asserting yourself and actually just being blunt and straight up and down about it like not trying to sugarcoat it not trying to beat around the bush not trying to be not trying to drop hints that here or there no that page of swords energy is not sophisticated enough to to drive a conversation in that way when the when the page of swords comes out and it represents communication this is blunt complete 100 percent no bullshit communication Again, the Page of Swords is not sophisticated enough to weave it into some sort of uh, grand poetic form of communication. Uh-uh, no. No, this is like bo bare bones truth. Like all up in your face, sorry, not sorry. Like not trying to be, not trying to be, you get it. <laughs> so, but with that said though, you might just want to be careful. Just, just try and infuse as much compassion into this communication as you possibly can. Knight of Cups with the Page of Swords, okay? But ultimately, this is really good, good energy so far, Virgo, all right? Okay, I'm going to give this one more shuffle for you, and then I'm going to get into the rest of your reading here for the month of January 2020. All right, Virgo, let's go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Virgos, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of January 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Virgo, I'm going to give this five shuffles here. And actually, Spirit is now reminding me of what I was seeing for you when I first started channeling for you. So this is one. As many of you know, if you've been following me for a while, um, or maybe you don't know because you're new to my channel, this is shuffle number two. Um, I often see colors when I am channeling for individuals or for whatever, for the circumstance. This is number three. For you, Virgo, I'm seeing an overwhelming amount of white light. Okay, um, <clears throat> and what Spirit is saying to me through this, this is shuffle number four, is that you, Virgo, or for whomever I'm channeling for here, you're going through a resurgence of your deep sense of purity. Um, I'm hearing adolescence. So you might be regaining some sort of innocence or purity that you may have lost through conditioning in your adolescence. Um, and everyone ha and everyone has this sense of purity within them and it's really actually very it's very significant that this is coming forward so strongly for you Virgo because you are seen as in the zodiac you are seen as the sign of purity and of the vir of virginity now that's not to say that any of you are like trying to reclaim your virginity first of all that's not possible <laughs> that once that hymen is ruptured that hymen is ruptured but second of all it's really not even necessary so we're not talking about virginity in the sense of like you've never had sex before we're talking virginity or purity in the sense of getting down to the deep sense of of 
innate purity that is your God-given birthright, getting down to the purity of your soul, of your essence before it was tarnished, well, or before it had the the opportunity to become tarnished while living in living and experiencing a three-dimensional uh, experience or three-dimensional reality, right? And that's really also not to say that um, three-dimensional reality or the physical world is in any way impure. It's just, and this is, it's funny because I think this came, this came through, I think, was it the Leo reading that I just did? It might have been Cancer, um, either Leo or Cancer, I can't remember, but that I was saying that there was a sense of purity coming back into the situation, um, and it's not like anyone Ha it, everyone has this sense of purity, but when you come here into this three-dimensional world, this physical world, you get dirty and you get tarnished. And so I think it was the cancer reading, but there was a sense of uh, removing anything that may have tarnished or, or muddied up or covered over your sense of purity. Okay. And so it's now you're, it's like you're rediscovering that or you're regaining that Virgo. That's what I'm picking up for you. All right. That's beautiful. Okay. Last shuffle. Number five. Woo. All right, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter for the month of January 2020. Let's get into it. Boop. All right, Virgo. Overall energy. Oh, the Two of Cups. Woo! <laughs> okay, so um, in this sense of purity here, Virgo, you do have the manifestation of the balance between masculine and feminine within you. Um, and that's part of what this purity is bringing forward towards you. Reconnecting with this purity is reconnecting with your inner sense of balance between the masculine and feminine, okay? Again, regaining a sort of state of purity and or awareness that, ha that, you, that you had before you got here or maybe when you got here, but that was lost over time through some sort of conditioning or whatever else you dealt with growing up, starting in adolescence. Now, this also can represent with this balance of masculine and feminine within you, that also can represent the external representation or reflection of the balance between masculine and feminine energy. So that could represent or be manifested or externalized as a partnership, a divine partnership, uh, maybe even a twin flame union, maybe if that resonates with you, okay? Especially in terms of like partnerships coming together, you have this card which is the two of cups which is in my opinion the minor arcana version of the lovers and then you have the lovers which is like the major arcana version of the two of cups with the lovers representing a divine partnership divine union it can also represent a fifth dimensional relationship and then when you get down to the earth plane when you get to the two of cups that can represent as the physical manifestation of that fifth dimensional relationship now manifesting in the physical if that resonates with you that's something i'm picking up on so that's why i wanted to share that part of the message underneath the two of cups you oh yes virgo you've got the six of wands oh yes and this is an energy of victory I'm hearing of sides coming together, of harmony, of union, of balance, of peace, where there may have been opposing sides, where there may have even been a war. There is an energy of um, a truce, maybe even the war ending and there being peace between these two opposing sides. And that absolutely could be the war between masculine and feminine energy that you dealt with and, and you worked on integrating in your internal reality, okay? Which is now looking like it's being reflected in your external underneath the six of wands, you have the page of wands, which is an energy of a messenger. So there could be a message coming through for you. There also could be some of you may want to deliver a message. And this is probably a very passionate, maybe even well, passionate, maybe even sexually oriented message, but whatever. It, it, it's more of the passion that is involved here. That's the most, that's the biggest message. But also the page of wands is an energy of self-discovery. Again, this is, a, in, my, in my opinion, this is a minor arcana version of the hermit. So we have yet another depiction of spiritual reality and spiritual reflection and spiritual definition now manifesting in the physical in terms of re-identifying yourself in the physical reality with this page of wands energy underneath the page of wands is a two of pentacles okay balance um this balance could be financial for you you might be working on finding some sort of financial balance. Um, I'm hearing investments. So maybe looking on, on finding balance, balancing ways to bring greater balance into like your investments, what you might want to continue investing in, what you might not want to continue investing in, what new ventures or new 
things you might be wanting to invest in and that does just that doesn't that just doesn't mean like stocks and bonds and all that this could be relationships this could be certain circumstances this could anything anything that you would want to invest your time energy and money into i really do feel like there might be a reassessment of that for you in your life right now virgo there also is an energy of working on finding balance so if this is like say, let's take that war analogy that just came out with the Six of Wands. If there was a war between opposing sides, maybe a significant other of yours and maybe like your friend's circle or the people that surround you or vice versa or something like that or whatever this represents for you, I really do feel like, Virgo, you are in an energy of working to find, to strike a balance between these opposing sides and to allow, give everybody a, a, a proper chance to, to, to live in harmony with each other, especially if you are looking to come together with someone in the near future over this next year, whatever or not, okay? Oh, Virgo, I love this. All right, so we're gonna get into the rest of your reading here. So um, first half, second half of the reading, you could also look at this as the first half, second half of your month. Take it however it resonates. All right, Virgo. First set of surrounding energies for you in the first half of your reading, you have, ooh, the five of cups. But spirit is saying to me that this is in fact a past energy. You might still be in a little bit of a morning energy or morning period. That's okay. Let the past be the past. Let bygones be bygones. That's what I'm hearing right now for you, Virgo. But I also kind of feel like that's already the understanding that you've come to. I do kind of want to say that you have you have recently exited a period of mourning. But uh, what I'm hearing also understanding for you here. So whatever has spilled with this Three of Cups energy here that has spilled, whatever has spilled out of your life, come on, come on, can you focus, please? Can you focus? Whatever, you guys can see it. Whatever has spilled out here is toxic or was toxic in nature. And I really feel like with the perspective or the understanding that I'm hearing you're coming, through, coming to with this, Virgo, you understand full well why those toxic elements needed to be released from your life. And, it, and if we're speaking in terms of divine partnership, this is not even a situation in which you understand why those certain elements needed to, to, to be removed or spill out in your life in order for you to end up coming together with this divine counterpart. No, it's actually more so you needing to learn what was not toxic for what was toxic for you and what was not serving you and what you actually just needed to let go of regardless of coming together with some uh, some other individual in the external reality okay but ultimately see here whatever was spilled out three of cups you still have that two of cups that's still standing behind this individual and the two of cups is the very first card in your overall energy that is a really good sign that is a very very good energy okay i really i'm hearing that you have really come to an understanding of this and the circumstances involved and why they needed to happen and you've you've overcome you you you've learned a great deal from this which is beautiful five of cups is coupled with ah yes temperance see yes okay temperance is divine divine timing Tem temperance is also patience temperance is also more so alchemy okay so this is another depiction of that two of cups energy i really kind of feel like whether this is on an internal level or an external level i really do feel like virgos or at least the virgos that i'm channeling for right now are very divinely divine partnership oriented okay this is another depiction of that two of cups but in this case with the with the what the temperance is representing here is finding a way to bring these two opposing individuals or you could say the masculine and the feminine together to create a greater whole this is the alchemization process excuse me between the counterparts between the two individuals between the two energies and the three of cups energy absolutely had to spill out in order to make space for the two of the two of you or the two of energies within you even to come together okay to create the environment for these two to be alchemized for the greater uh union to be realized wow Second set of surrounding energies for you, Virgo, in the first half of your reading. Ooh, the devil. Oh, oh shit. Okay, well, don't freak out because maybe it's not as bad as it seems. I do kind of still feeling like I, I am feeling an energy of you are still, in fact, facing the devil, Virgo. And actually, to be quite on, ooh, to be quite honest, honey, you actually might even be still entertaining the devil in some ways. Hmm. 
Now, this also could represent Capricorn energy or Capricorn season, which is what we're in at the moment of channeling this reading for you. So Capricorn season may oppose some strong challenges for you. But in that, I'm hearing in terms of that strong, those strong challenges that this may pre be presenting for you, Virgo, this actually just may be challenges in terms of your boundaries. So in situations where you may be entertaining some, still some devilish or tar not tar not tar narcissistic. That's a, that narcissistic is a um, is a combination between toxic and narcissistic. But entertaining, if you're still entertaining any of those energies right now, you're in the process of learning where your strong and firm boundaries lie and how maybe even how to enforce them. Some of these individuals could be your family members. That is what I'm picking up on here, especially with that Queen of Pentacles energy that came out. Um, that was in the overall, was that the overall energy? Yeah, because we have the two of pentacles now, right? Um, okay, but the, the, keep in mind, this is all part of the learning process. This also could be some sort of fear, apprehension. It could be a fear of codependency. If you're the masculine here, there could be a fear of your feminine getting too attached and slipping back into that codependent, toxic runner chaser energy. But that's really just an illusion because if that's the case, I feel like your feminine is actually very aware of that him or herself and is really not trying to slip into that either okay the devil is coupled with ooh, the four of cups virgo virgo you might you could possibly be facing missing out on an opportunity because of fear because of codependency or because of attachments to circumstances from the past and it's very interesting virgo Right after I did the Leo reading, which I did right before this one, I, I shuffled the deck, I cleared out the energies, and the Four of Cups was at the bottom of the deck before I started shuffling to pull your pre-shuffle energies. I did three shuffles, and then I looked at the bottom of the deck again, and the Four of Cups was still there. But it was at that point that I pulled your pre-shuffle energy. You could potentially face missing out on a very important opportunity, Virgo, if you if you allow your ego or fear or the attachments to some other people that might be skeptical in your reality or might be judgmental or still quite toxic for you, you could face missing out on an opportunity because of that. Okay? There also could be a fear of rejection here with this Five of Cups, especially if you're looking to reconnect with a divine counterpart, twin flame, or just someone from your past that you have a significant connection with. There could be an element of, what if this person rejects me again just because of what happened in the past? Again, Virgo, that is your ego. That is the devil on your shoulder trying to distract you. Don't allow that to happen, all right? I mean, you have free will. It is up to you. You can either choose to listen to that bullshit, naggy little energy on the on your that annoying pe that annoying fucking energy on your shoulder, or you can choose to do the exact opposite of what this energy is trying to get you to do and go forward with what your heart truly desires. Yes. Okay. Your challenge in the first half of your reading here, Virgo, is the Seven of Cups, illusion, confusion maybe even fear and anxiety. I mean, there could be a lot of individuals around you right now that are trying to, 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 to get you off your focus. The Seven of Cups energy is, is feeling like the what ifs. This is like, what if things don't go perfectly according to plan? What if I'm not perfect enough for this person? What if I'm not in the perfect enough place for this person to accept me? Your propensity towards perfectionism, Virgo, is going to get in your way, okay? Do not allow that to happen. The strongest thing I'm getting with this Seven of Cups here is the are the what-ifs and the all, the all of the options, all of the different ways something could work out, and that's really all just illusionary. Don't worry about that. Just focus on what it is you desire to achieve or what it is you desire to manifest in this lifetime. Focus on that. Focus on that feeling place. Focus on how that feels to you. Focus on that feeling only. And then once you get the inspiration, just follow through with it, regardless of how things may turn out in the future. Just focus on what you can do now to facilitate what it is you wish to des you desire to manifest and create, okay? Do not allow the illusion and the confusion to stop you. Seven of Cups is coupled with the Ten of Swords. 
I'm telling you, Virgo, whatever this confusion is for you, whatever these options are for you, it's time to put that to a rest or it's time to recognize that those days are done. They're behind you. It's over. The, all the what ifs. You don't have to worry about, any, about that anymore. You need to recognize that the past is the past. Whatever toxic or terrible elements of your past, especially with a specific individual, that's done. Over with. You two can start a new chapter now. And especially with that Queen of Pentacles energy that came out, you know, this person might still be very stern and very strong and very, very keeping from some very strong boundaries, but they're ready to move forward with this with you. Okay? So you don't have to worry about that. Don't have, do not allow this toxic energy, Virgo, to stop you in your tracks, to stop you from achieving this victory. Okay? Because it's right there. It's the victory itself is in your overall energy. That is what you are moving towards. That is what is leading you. That's what you're leading up to. What's in your current energy are the, are, are the possibilities and the elements of the toxic elements that could stop you, that could hinder your process, okay? You have the choice to not allow that to happen. Closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, Virgo. You have all the king of cups. Ooh, woo! Okay, see, now this is the energy that I'm talking about, Virgo, that is going to lead you to where you want to go. You know exactly what it is that you want. You know exactly who it is that you want. Do not, do not allow this devil energy to allow, to, to get you to start questioning what you know in your heart is true. Because what I'm seeing with this King of Cups energy is not only are you emotionally aware and stable and even mature in this decision, you are ready to take some sort of action. Or at least you want, you have desire to take some sort of action. Go with that. Follow your heart. Let your heart lead you, not your ego. Your ego is there for a reason. We're not telling you to completely silence your ego, but there might be a little bit of an energy where your ego is getting a little too in the driver's seat, and that ego is not anywhere supposed to be anywhere near the driver's seat. <laughs> okay, you all right? He could maybe the maybe the ego can ride can ride uh can ride um can ride a uh, shotgun. Okay, maybe the ego can be co-pilot. Okay, I don't know if you really want to allow it to be full co-pilot. Um, maybe, it, I, I mean, I almost want to tell it to ride bitch, but <laughs> but that's kind of mean. And that's not, I mean, whatever. I, 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 maybe you're in that energy right now where you're so fed up with your ego and all the bullshit that it brings up for you. You're like, you know what? Get out of the co-pilot seat. You're, ri you're riding bitch as punishment. I don't want to ride in that middle seat. Then maybe you should shut your mouth. Ooh, okay, Virgo. All right. I mean, I get it, but you don't have to be so mean. <laughs> okay. King of Cups is coupled with... Oh, damn. Virgo, the King of Pentacles. Look, homie. Look. And this is going out to my masculines out there. Whether you're a woman or a man, it doesn't really matter. If you're really fully in this masculine energy, I got something to tell you. If you think for one second that you are not enough, that you are not stable enough, that you are not grounded enough, that you do not have enough financial whatever to be this king of cups that you know you feel yourself to be, honey, you are sorely mistaken. But Virgo, this is the king to that queen that came out. In the preach, Virgo, Virgo, Vir damn it, Virgo, shut up and listen. <laughs> okay, shut that, shut that ego of yours up. Okay, stick that bitch in the trunk for now. Put him, put, I swear to God, Virgo, put a, put, a, put, a, put a, something around its mouth, put tape over its mouth if you need to, throw it in the trunk and let it bounce around back there for a, for a few minutes. All right, you are good enough, Virgo. King of pentacles, king of cups, I mean, come the fuck on. It doesn't really get any better than this for you in this, in this situation right now. This is all the validation that you need because the kings don't fuck around, all right? Virgo. <laughs> oh my God, Virgo, this is amazing, okay. I'm telling you guys, the energies for everybody moving forward into 2020 are just have been beautiful all around. And I'm, especially with the kind of like the, ooh, the apprehension I was kind of feeling for you in the beginning, this is actually turning out to be really, really, really good for you. All right, Virgo? Okay. 
getting into the second half of your reading here first set of surrounding energies for you oh the magician so check it out homie you are in the driver's seat you are manifesting this is very much an energy of as above so below it's interesting i think it was the leo reading in which uh it was feeling like someone was coming into some strong esoteric wisdom maybe it was the cancer reading i'm not sure um but someone was coming into some very strong esoteric wisdom and it's now they're they're really kind of gung-ho and excited to put that into practice here's that energy again with the magician so as above so so below so bringing more of your divine essence bringing more of your higher self your truth your light your wisdom and grounding that and manifesting that into your physical reality okay the magician is coupled with oh the knight of cups i really do feel like um virgo at some point in the near future maybe this is in the month of january or maybe this is like further down off maybe even february into march i'm feeling like it does feel like it's in the near future like maybe somewhere within the first quarter of the year but you are really working on manifesting an opportunity to express yourself to show your love you are being guided by the universe by spirit by the ascended masters specifically because as i was starting to say that i did see 33 33 on the counter and three is a number of the ascended masters 33 is a master number um, you really could be getting a lot of guidance from the higher higher wisdom, maybe especially the Ascended Masters, on how to manifest an opportunity to express yourself here, Virgo, okay? That's beautiful. But I'm also with this, what I'm seeing here, you're manifesting an ability to, to move forward with what this King of Cups energy represents for you, all right? Yes. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Virgo, in the second half of your reading. Oh, whoa, the Four of Wands. I mean... If I mean, if uh, between <laughs> okay, between the King of Cups, the King of Pentacles, and this Four of Wands energy here, someone is ready to settle down, or at least is getting ready to, is gearing up towards it. I am seeing a home here, um, setting up a home. I, I'm, I'm feeling an energy of a family life, um, and this actually might be something that you're really truly desiring here with this with this knight of cups energy from a very innocent point of view this may have even been something that you have really desired since you were young maybe a little kid maybe even a teenager when you just when you figured that you really wanted to really wanted something like that but then as time went on you know that kind of got tarnished you got to have gotten you got um removed or separated from that feeling I am feeling like if that's you, you are coming back into an energy of rediscovering your desire to have a stable home, to have a family, to to develop a family, to have a home for your family to come to. I am literally, I'm li literally with this four of wands, I'm seeing a physical home for you and your family to live in. And especially with this king of pentacles and king of cups energy, from a masculine point of view, there is definitely an energy of putting that work in to develop that. To realize that okay four of wands is coupled with the four of pentacles Ooh, okay sometimes the four of pentacles can be a very uh, miserly energy not letting go of things or not releasing some things that absolutely need to be released here but that's not what i'm getting um especially not with the sense of this energy that i'm feeling for you virgo but also with the sense of the four of wands here there is there is a sense of really settling down okay um, nesting, nest egging, um, or, or trying to develop some sort of nest egg for you and your potential partner, your, your twin flame, your soulmate, whatever, whatever the future holds for you to, whatever vision you have for you to, there is an energy of really trying to gather the resources or gather the finances that you would need to realize or manifest this, this home environment that you or maybe someone that you're connected to is envisioning. And if this, is, and this really might be a situation, especially between the fact that you have Virgo, you have the King of Pentacles here and the Queen of Pentacles came out in your pre-shuffle energy. And I was feeling that that Queen of Pentacles is your counterpart in some way whether you just you see it as a life partner a soul a soulmate a divine partnership a divine union or a twin flame it really doesn't matter ultimately this person is in fact your counterpart this person is the feminine to your masculine this person is the 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 queen to your king okay 
this person actually does have this vision as well and they may as well especially in terms of like a twin flame relationship they absolutely are seeing you as their as their partner they are envisioning this life with you specifically okay that's what i'm seeing here so for and and keep in mind guys you could be this masculine or you could be the feminine that came out in the in the pre-shuffle it doesn't matter this is a general reading just take it as it resonates but i am feeling like you two are very much on the same page here you may not have even spoken to each other for a long time that doesn't matter you two are very much on the same page here all right <clears throat> Uh, your challenge in the second half of your reading here, Virgo, you have the Ten of Wands, burdens. For some of you, Virgos, I really do feel like, especially the, for the masculines out there, Spirit is saying, the masculines out there, you are taking on too much responsibility. You do not have to do this alone. I understand completely you resonating with the masculine energy. You want to be that physical provider. You want to be that that financial stability, that that money maker, that the the person that, you know, provides that physical form of 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 stability and, and support. But you don't have to do that alone because the feminine absolutely can and will help you with that. There is a, another sense of pride and ego that's coming through with this 10 of wands saying, "No, I'm the man or I'm the masculine. This is my responsibility." I need to do this for us. And there's also a sense of self-sabotage in the sense of you are sabotaging yourself in believing that if you can't do this all on your own without asking for help from others or maybe even asking for help from your divine feminine or your counterpart, then there's a sense of weakness to you, like you're not enough. Virgo, or for whomever I'm channeling for, if you're the cross watcher here, Virgo, let me tell you right now, that is a lie. 100% bull face bullshit lie okay first of all there is nothing sexier from my feminine point of view there is nothing sexier than a man or a masculine energy that will that is rec that recognizing that recognizes he needs a little bit of help or she needs a little bit of help and is not afraid to ask for it number two being aware that you need to ask for help and being able to do that is actually a sign of strength not weakness and quite frankly here virgo your your counterpart your feminine counterpart if this is resonating with you desires to help you does not want you to have to do this all on your own yes he or she is going to take on certain elements to this this grounding and this providing that are more feminine in nature if they are the feminine counterpart but that doesn't mean that it has to be strictly one way or the other you two absolutely can juggle can balance can take on certain things at certain points keep in mind guys that we all have masculine and feminine energy within okay so even though you have a situation where one is embodying more of the masculine one is embodying more of the feminine sometimes those roles can switch and intertwine but that is the that is the energy of being in a partnership whether it's a divine union, a twin flame partnership, or, or a soulmate partnership, or what, how, again, doesn't matter how we want to label it. It's just a fucking label. It's a partnership for a reason. Okay? So you don't have to take this all on yourself. Ten of Wands is coupled with... Oh, the fool! Yes. Um, take a leap of faith, masculines, and ask for help. Delegate. Again, you don't have to do this all on your own. We are partners, okay? And especially, like, like, let's talk in terms of twin flames or, or divine counterparts or whatnot, whatever. Especially if you two are definitely, again, whether you've spoken to each other or not, if you two are in this energy of really starting to align with each other fully in the physical, then you both as individuals have been doing your worth to bring this into alignment within. So both of you are probably pretty solid, pretty financially good. Like you two really could throw down and provide for each other in a financial way. Because if you really are coming into alignment with a divine counterpart or a twin flame, it's because you have found a sense of union and wholeness within yourself, which absolutely would reflect itself partially in having a stable financial situation, okay? Your challenge here for the masculine Virgos out there, 
even for the feminine Virgos. I mean, it's for everybody. But the challenge here is to take a leap of faith and allow your counterpart to help you. Allow yourself to delegate some of the responsibilities. And this would, especially for a masculine out there, this would be a leap of faith because you are allowing the responsibilities to be delegated between the two of you. Maybe even between other, part, other, other members of your family as well, okay? Oh, Virgo. I love this. All right, closing message or potential outcome in the second half of your reading here. Ooh, the Queen of Wands. Honestly, Virgo, what I want to say here is the Queen of Wands is reminding you to believe in yourself, to notice your worth, notice your beauty, notice your magnetism, your magical nature. With all this talk of masculinity here, we don't want you to forget about your feminine side either. Because she's just as powerful and just as potent and just as necessary, okay? So that definitely gives in, that, that speaks to this challenge here with the Ten of Wands and the, and the Fool. It's like, don't forget, you. yeah, you might be pretty, you know, you might be pretty active, pretty masculine, but don't forget to be receptive and feminine as well. There's, there's, a, there's just as much power here as there is up here. Yes? Queen of Wands is coupled with... Oh, justice. Ooh, okay. Um, so, check it out, y'all. Um, especially with that Seven of Cups energy that came out here for you masculines. Or Virgo. Um, there is justice in terms of like who your true... Maybe your true twin flame is. Who your true feminine counterpart is. Especially if we're talking to the masculines out there. Uh, the Queen of Wands can represent the, the divine feminine in this, in in the Tarot, whereas the King of Wands would represent the divine masculine. And it was, and it's, and in, sure, you could say any of the court cards, any of the the kings or queens can represent that. But it is specifically, other than outside of the major arcana, in the minor arcana, it's normally specifically the king of king and queen of Wands, because Wands represents spirit. Ra wands, uh, yeah, ra wands can represent creativity, yes, um, and sexuality, yes, but also spirituality, spiritual energy, and so that's why it would be represented as the king and queen of wands. Now, what I'm feeling here for you, Virgos, and this is especially for the masculine Virgos out there, the masculine counterparts to the feminine counterpart, there is a sense of justice coming into play in terms of who your true divine feminine is, or who your true feminine counterpart is, or who your true twin flame is queen of wands and justice now this is not to say now all the feminines out there don't get so so excited i mean this is, doesn't necessarily mean that they're actually really going to take any sort of action even though yeah there is a little bit of a like a little bit of a sphincter you know squeeze over here being like uh oh uh oh danger there could be some external influence here but ultimately ultimately whether they take whether they take action in January or some other else, some other time in the rest of the year. I mean, I don't know, 2021. I don't know. I'm not trying to be predict time here, okay? But there is a sense of justice that is coming into play in terms of the energy between the two of you right now. And the strongest thing I'm getting here is between the Queen of Wands and justice is recognizing and realizing and bringing justice to the fact of who is the actual feminine counterpart. That's what I'm getting with that. All right. Oh man, Virgo, this is fantastic. Okay, let's get let's get your oracle guidance for January 2020. Yeah, for my Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and a Jupiter. Yeah, yeah. All right, Virgo, last shuffle. Whew, here we go. Oracle guidance, please. Spirit for my Virgos, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. The this one yes yes all righty you have card number two virgo that is hold on Estanatlehi. 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 i don't know i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly but it says turquoise changing woman okay let's see what this says <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, let's get a let's get a good focus on this. Yes, can we focus? Can we can we focus here? I guess 
Come on. Come on. Mm, come on, focus. Sorry, guys. All right, whatever. I'll leave it there. It'll probably focus in a second. Okay. This says, I am the turquoise moon mother, and I come to you now with a message of change. I really want this to focus. I'm so sorry, guys. This is going to bother me, but like my Virgo rising is showing. Like, I want this to be perfect. <laughs> Fuck. Hold on. <laughs> Ugh, I'm not, no, 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 I'm making this focus, damn it. We are going to get this damn focus. <laughs> oh, God. Jesus Christ, Eric. Okay, fine, whatever, I'm just going to move forward. I am the turquoise moon mother, and I come to you now with a message of change. This change, oh my God, and this is so perfect to like the fact that I have a Virgo rising. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, going on. This may be change that you want or change that you fear, but either way, I will show you how to use this change to become stronger, wiser, and more empowered to fulfill your divine destiny. Do not fear the changes around you and within you. Trust in the timing of what is happening in your world. In a reading, this says, change is upon you. It is essential for your continued growth, and you do not need to fear it. As you allow for this change, remain steadfast in your inner spiritual connection. This gives you courage, trust, peace, and reassurance, and you will find ways to navigate the shift so that your life improves through the process. If you are thinking of making a change, you are encouraged to do so without trying to force it. Be open and do your part to the best of your ability, but also tune in to your own sense of divine timing, asking the universe for help and allowing life to unfold according to its own rhythm of creative, loving intelligence. Oh, there you have it, Virgo. I hope that was helpful for you. This was a really great reading for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful. Again, if you'd like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below. With that, I hope you guys have a fantastic month, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of February. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye. I love you. <laughs> Bye.